be ashamed of, but I'm not. I was bored. I had this little bitty Greyhound or whatever, Jiang Dong or some kind of weird motor from Harbor Freight a boy gave me. And I had a Chinese dung bicycle. It ain't worth a damn. It's a Huffy and it's super thin metal. You can't hardly do no welding on them without blowing holes in them with my welder anyway. So, uh, like all the front wheel ones that I've got, the motor's offset over to the left. It hinges on this C-shaped bracket here through the fork. The stiffener bracket goes down and it actually isn't hooked to the axle slot like some of them are. I, the metal was shorter and I made do with what I had so I just welded it to the tube. But the clutch action, up here I've made a twist grip thing with a locking device. When you're ready to go, you lock it down. When you come to a stop sign, you push this and pull the lever up. It holds the bicycle stunt peg off of the tire. I cut a stunt peg off and welded it to an old piece of a sprocket that had no teeth on it. And drove it up on there and locked it down with a Allen screw, though it went on so tight I didn't really need the Allen screw. That's a piece of a Bunton lawnmower handlebar. Uh, all my linkages uh, tied in pretty well if you watch the workings of them. If you need more tension on the tire, you just loosen the handlebars and push them down a little bit. Kicks this out a little bit and puts a little bit more tension on the tire. But as long as it's got lots of air in it, you don't want it to squash in too hard because my, years ago I had a tire blow out from busting the cords up in it while I was on it. When I was a young kid. I've been making these things since I was 12 or 13. I'm 62 now, so I bet you I've made, I've got 17 here in the basement now. And I bet in my time I've tore up 30 of them. You and me tell, we've made a shitload of them. But I've, I guess the older I get, I want to hang on to some of this stuff just because it's like uh, my 10 seconds of fame, something to brag on. Like my mom said, you got your name in the paper and it wasn't in the arrest column, so you're doing good. So, uh, that's fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, something else is kind of interesting. I didn't have a way to fasten the... Uh, this is actually a stiff cable off a lawnmower and a brake lever off a BMX bike, I believe. But I took a castle nut, acorn nut rather, drilled a hole through it, and I took the cable, which was way too small for the threads of the acorn nut, I put two pairs of ice grips on it and turned them counterclockwise, which swells the thread out. If you wrap a spring tighter, it gets in smaller. If you unwrap it, it gets fatter. So I wrapped it out enough to make to make it screw into the threads in the acorn nut and my throttle runs right down through the center of it. It's got it clamped to the exhaust. That's why I used the metal sheathing because if the rubber one would have been a melted up mess. And I was anxious to get it to test it and see how it was going to do and it's been pretty trouble free. And surprisingly it'll pull my, I weigh 290 and it'll pull me around pretty decent. You have to help up hills but when I did it I thought this is a this is just to say I've got 17 of them. This is going to be a piece of crap, but really it's, it's not too bad. I was proud of my clutch linkage more than anything. That little thumb thing that I pushed to unlock it is actually a lift lug off a of Briggs & Stratton motor, a, a, a two-cylinder that I guess they got to come along or something at the factory. That was bolted to one of the head bolts. And this was just some kind of bracket off of the same button that that exhaust pipe came off of. Did a little drilling, welded a wedge to it so that when it when it does engage, you can lock it in and the motor isn't flopping up and down. But, uh, out of the 17, there's probably this one, the big Wade Made Motorized Mayhem, and that's what the look he's up under. Wade Made Motorized Mayhem on YouTube. There's out of 17 of them, there's about five that are worthy of getting out and going. All the rest of them are full of varnish or the tires are rotted off of them where the cords are sticking out of them. The tubes are laying on the ground. This old front wheel drive runs perfect. We get it out and run it every now and then. It sits down on the tire, makes a squealing noise. It sounds like the tire's squealing on the ground, but it's actually the exhaust pipe roller squealing on the tire until it gets locked in. Uh, and it's the same deal. It hinges on a U-shaped. It's damn near the same setup as that one out there. Just It's an old, early... Not real early, I think it's a 67 model Briggs & Stratton Edger motor. 
the badass one is this one back here that's got a Jacobson two cycle and did have a derailleur at one time where you could click off five gears it wasn't it shouldn't have been made but I ain't right I thought it would be something something cool and I could go fast but I think back in them days I was still imbibing in herbal things and I got to thinking about it and I thought you know a little skinny tire and my thin skin if I hit the pavement I'm gonna file off like a pencil eraser so I detuned it to its one lowest gear and it's been that way ever since it ain't even ran in well I've been here 35 years it ain't even ran in 30 years probably but it would especially if somebody told me it wouldn't I could clean the carburetor and have it running before supper time but the other video shows all of them it doesn't get a view of all my motors though because uh, we were just that was the very first video and I didn't know what the heck I'm doing still don't but I've got on the shelf got a 7s Briggs 7s uh, Clinton no a Lawson uh, Continental with a distributor cap looking deal that has a has the gov governor counterweights inside that little distributor cap and everything was perfect and the very day I put it together after cleaning it all up and painting it real nice I turned it over with the cap still off and one of the little clips that snaps the cap on I broke the ear off of it I was mad enough to eat a whole fried chicken but it, it doesn't really hurt anything but the little ear that you pick it off with on this side is broken off I used a spray paint or a paint sample can for a gas tank because it's just going to get started every, every once in a while and that's about it. There's an article they did in the Courier Journal about these motorbikes way back in 80, 88. That's a little hot air engine, a little Sterling engine I made. Just piddling around, too much time, nothing to do. This Briggs is off of a real tight mower and it's got the yank lever which is basically the exact same setup as the kickstart just a little different handle instead of a kicker it's got a pipe on it. The motor down here behind it is a Clinton that has one lobe that works both valves. The lobe comes around hits the one and then after it's right amount of time hits the other tap it. They're canted in the proper order and that's why the exhaust is out the back side and the carburetor is on this side. So even way back then you didn't get gas ball like a lot of the uh, lawnmowers did. Got a, a iron horse that you can take the jug off of without ever draining the oil. Not that anybody would want to do that. But its kickstarter is a spring that winds down and grabs a drum. And then when it unwinds it gets bigger and lets the drum turn back freely. Same deal as swelling that uh, throttle cable out on that one motor to make it uh, bigger. Grabs when it winds down, lets off when it unwinds. Now I didn't have the little cover for the crankcase vent. I got thinking I need the little rounded dome, something to snap down over it. That was the only thing that was missing. And I got to looking at my battery cable cleaner. I thought, hmm, they're only about two or three bucks. I'll just cut the lid off of it. So I took a tubing cutter, cut the lid off the battery terminal cleaner and snaps her down on there and you can't tell it from the original. Uh, Briggs and Stratton up there, I said something about on one of the other videos. It runs. It originally was at Cave Hill Cemetery here in Louisville on a real tight mower with wooden handlebars. Yeah, I got it from an old man, uh, I want to say Harlan, but that wasn't his name. He, he had a shop down in Butchel right by the railroad tracks on Old Bargetown Road. Harlan Smith or something Smith. Harlan don't sound right. But anyway, he had a repair shop years ago when he put this thing out beside his house. Water went down the valve guides since they're exposed and rotted the valves down about half the diameter they're supposed to be. So rather than to try to build them up with brass, I took some 7S Briggs and Stratton valves that were longer and had pins that went through them to secure them. Chucked them up in a drill because I didn't own a lathe and cut grooves in them for the uh, keeper type fasteners on the valves and put the original keepers on 7S valves, shorten them down to the right length. All shade tree, but pretty darn good. You can't look at them and tell them from the originals, except the originals were rusted down to about the size of a coat hanger. It would run if I get the varnish out of it. That's about it. That's about it.